All right, guys, so in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the final Sweet 16 teams. I'm going to go rapid fire and rank them, and we're also going to take a look at a few different analytics along with the game lines. But when it comes to me ranking all of these teams from 16 to 1, there's so many that you can argue considering there's been so few upsets, but I would just say... From 16 to 1, I would go at number 16, NC State. At number 15, San Diego State. At number 14, Clemson. Number 13, Alabama. Number 12, Marquette. Number 11, Iowa State. Number 10, Creighton. 9, Gonzaga. 8, Illinois. 7, Tennessee. 6, North Carolina. 5, Duke. Believe it or not, yes, Duke the 4 seed at number 5 overall. They've been extremely impressive. I am worried that Houston might lose that game. Number four, Purdue, the one seed. Number three, Houston. Number two, Arizona, a two seed that I think is going to make the national title. And then number one, it has to be UConn. Now that would be my rapid fire rankings. The analytics do slightly disagree with me. Not surprising, taking a look at those, you can see right now, at least according to T-Rank, they still do like Houston as the favorite to be the national champion. Of course, when it comes to Vegas, they would disagree. UConn would be the favorite. You also do have Purdue and Arizona. How about Iowa State? It really doesn't surprise me that Iowa State is up that high. They've got those baked in early season non-conference blowout wins that's helping them. Tennessee is a two seed. North Carolina I've said for a while, they're the weakest one seed. You can see they're behind three different two seeds in terms of their chances to go deep into this tournament. You also do have Mark. It's interesting because there are a lot of analytics that favor Alabama to beat North Carolina. And it's kind of understandable. I mean, that's kind of like a pick em game. I know North Carolina's like three-point favorites right now, but it'll be interesting. Marquette sitting as a two seed, but remember, they get NC State, so they're likely to make the Elite Eight. You do have Duke there, Creighton, Illinois, Gonzaga, who's been impressive in the tournaments, Alabama, Clemson, San Diego State, and NC State, I think, are the clear bottom three. When it comes to this, Alabama certainly has no defense, but they do have an extremely impressive offense. Illinois, kind of same mold. Really good offense, not a great defense. Iowa State, the exact opposite. And then when it comes to the teams that have played best in the tournament so far, it is just a two-game sample size. It's not surprising, though. UConn, Duke. How about Clemson, the number three team? Uh, Tennessee, Purdue, Gonzaga, the five seed. Houston, San Diego State, Illinois. A&M sitting at 1-1 one one in the tournament. Obviously, they didn't even make the Sweet 16, but they're on there. North Carolina, Michigan State, Colorado State, along with Iowa State. Kind of interesting to see teams that lost above teams that won. But that just goes to show you it's dependent on matchups and such. And getting to the actual matchups, we're going to be looking at the game lines. So, again, how they did this is pretty remarkably stupid They've got a 10 o'clock game starting at the TD Garden, which is the Celtics home arena. And that game probably actually won't start until like 1030 because normally they have to push games back. It's just, I mean, obviously it doesn't make sense. Why would you start a game in Boston later than a game in California? But in general, there's no way that, you know, a, a game should be starting at 10 o'clock local time under any scenario. So it just really doesn't make any sense. Clemson, Arizona, Arizona solid favorites. I like Arizona to go very deep. If you have Arizona going deep, I think you picked a really good team. That is a nice matchup against the Clemson team that admittedly I have underrated, but I'm not concerned about Arizona losing that game. Even if they were facing Baylor, I would kind of have a similar opinion. I think Arizona is going to go deep into this tournament, at least have a Final Four run. You take a look at the next game, San Diego State-UConn. UConn sitting minus 10.5. So UConn, their first game against Stetson, obviously they were like 27-point favorites. Then they were 14-point favorites over Northwestern. And they're still double-digit favorites. This is almost like the woman's side to where a team is just you know such huge favorites they're like a lock to reach the elite eight san diego state look they crushed yale i get it 
I, I, I'm just not buying San Diego State this year. I know everyone's trying to say, oh, it's a rematch of the national title. It's, it's just, I don't think this is going to be a close game. I think UConn's going to crush them. Alabama and North Carolina expect a very high scoring game. You can see the total sitting at 173 and a half. I do think North Carolina probably wins this game. They did have a very good performance against a, a game Michigan State team who really... They were up by like 12 early in that one, and North Carolina was able to come back and easily win with a big second half. I think North Carolina is better than Bama. They're just more complete. I mean, Bama could win. It's going to be high scoring. It'll be like 90 to 86 or something. Illinois and Iowa State, a true contrast of styles. So that is the unfortunate 10 o'clock game that's starting local time. Just a crazy start time, 10 o'clock, but... I think Illinois is probably going to win that game. It's going to be close. It's offense versus defense. You know, Iowa State sitting minus two and a half is probably right, considering it's a 2v3 matchup. It could go either way, but we will see there. Moving on to the four Friday games, and unfortunately, it's more of the same. You can see, you know, the, the late 7 o'clock game and the 10 o'clock game in Detroit, Michigan, but beginning NC State and Marquette. We'll see if NC State, a double-digit seed, can get to the Elite Eight. I did pick NC State to win in my second chance bracket just because I would like to see one, you want to call NC State a Cinderella. I guess they are kind of a Cinderella. They really weren't even going to make the tournament. They got the auto bid as an 11 seed. We'll see if they can beat Marquette. Marquette sitting minus 6.5. That's pretty fair. You do have Gonzaga and Purdue. Purdue's had a really nice tournament. I mean, they destroyed Utah State, obviously beating Grambling. You know, it's very easy, but that is the 16 seed that they... They did lose to a 16 seed last year, but Gonzaga has been extremely impressive, destroying McNeese in the first round. I did think McNeese would win that game in an upset. It didn't happen, but should be a good game. I do expect Purdue to hold serve and make an appearance into the Elite Eight as a one seed. This is probably the best game of the Sweet 16. It is Duke and Houston. So Duke sitting as a four seed. Lot of veteran leadership on that team. They just destroyed James Madison, ruined their chance at being a Cinderella. Houston is only sitting minus four and a half. Now Houston was wobbling against Texas A&M. But let's be honest, they were up by like 10 points with two minutes left and nearly threw that game I do like Houston to win this one. I did pick them to win the national title. They need to win it for my bracket. My bracket is, right now you could say, oh, it's not doing well. Yeah, I still have all my final four teams, guys. I could very easily finish in the 99th percentile, but I am a bit concerned mainly with Houston. And then I also do have Tennessee into my final four. I was really hoping that Creighton would lose in the second round, so Tennessee would not have to face them. But you can see Tennessee only sitting minus two and a half. That's a 3v2 matchup. Tennessee possibly could move on to face Purdue, which I think would be another. Really, no matter who Tennessee, if they beat Creighton, whether it's Gonzaga or Purdue, it's going to be a very hard matchup for them. But I do think Tennessee will win. If you're asking me to pick an upset in terms of these four games, uh, I think NC State might win or Gonzaga. I, I like Houston and I like Tennessee because they were two of my final four picks, even though the point spreads have them as just very slight favorites. And then obviously, you know, you have the narrative of this tournament. There's just very few upsets. It is what it is, guys. You know, we can sit there and analyze a lot of people that just picked the favorites, at least at this point, are doing very well in terms of their brackets. But but it's marginal, the point difference, it doesn't matter as long as you have the final four teams. It's not coping. It, I've seen this happen before. You will finish very high in, in terms of percentile. It just depends because the multiplier is so great when it comes to the final four. My issue is that you're looking at Houston and Tennessee possibly having an issue there. I think UConn for sure is going to make the final four. It just depends. Will UConn make the national title? Will they win the national title? If they do, you're going to have a lot of chalk. You know, my hope is that U UConn makes the Final Four, loses to Arizona. At that point, my bracket uh, would do very well. But either way, when it comes to this tournament, a lot of people saying, well, there's no upsets, it's boring. And to a degree, I have to agree with that because you want a 15 over a 2. You know, you want a really low seed into the Sweet 16. We almost had it with Oakland. I mean, Oakland was an overtime away from making it as a 14 seed, but... 
this is what happens sometimes. It is what it is, and these are some really great matchups in the Sweet 16, and that's kind of the narrative that people have been saying. Well, if there's no real upsets in the round of 32, which, I mean, there were some really bad blowouts in the round of 32. There's been a lot of high-scoring games. I feel like there's been three or four games into the 100s, which normally never happens in terms of tournaments. But uh, yeah, I think it's been a pretty good tournament. J just a, maybe a little bit too chalky, but we will see. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.